guys we're in Eganville um, had to come in to get a bug net bug net it was just terrible out there couldn't do another thing without the bug net I uh, ended up at the country depot um, this is also Eganville is also known for the fact that it's the closest town to the Bonnachere Caves and there's the Bonnachere River there it is that's the way down that way okay here we are at the quadville mine uh jeff is having a problem what's the problem jeff he can't, can't find the zipper on his thing yeah on. he's got it he's got it so apparently the bugs aren't bad i mean all the way to eganville to get a, a bug net and apparently the lady's telling me at the store oh no problem people are telling me there's almost no bugs anyway you okay jeff i'm good now good Looks like Jeff's already found a couple of crystals. My big thing I'm looking for is what I call Zunite. They call, the owner behind me calls Yuxonite. Uh, it's a rare earth element. They call it the, the junk, the junk mineral because what it basically does is it's forming up right at the end of the, uh, of the uh, crystallization. And it's basically scooping all of the elements that haven't already been taken up by other crystals. So it's a rare earth element um, it's usually found with alanite as well and as the owner tells me um, there's a basically if you're looking for that it's going to be in the burnt section of the uh, the feldspar where it goes from pink to an orangey brown color thus indicating the radioactives so that's what i'm looking for doesn't mean i'm going to find it but uh, he mentions also if you go back towards the um, to the actual pit itself this is the, the dumpings. He says he's just uh, taken material that's 70 years old from back there and he's just dumped it here. So it's nice and fresh. You've just got to dig down about uh, six inches and you're into virgin material. Um, so let's see what we can find. Jeff's already into the peristorite. Found some beautiful sort of feldspar with this wonderful peacock sheen. Um, there's a lot of it here. This is how old? This is, uh, this is from the blast 70 years ago and he's just moved it here, so it's all pretty well fresh. Oh. I don't know if you can see them or not, I'll do a close up with my other camera. Um, this is like platy black stuff, this is columbite. Um, it's really a niobium bearing uh, ore, which is kind of interchangeable with tantalum. So coltan, the mineral coltan, or just, excuse me, the ore coltan, um, has tantalum and niobium within it. This here is 12 to 14 parts, um, 12 to 14 to 1 of niobium, hence the reason it's called columbite. If it was higher in tantalum, they'd be calling it tantalite. Generically, coltan. Rare to find this in Ontario, very rare. Here's another, uh, here's another real cool thing. Um, you can see by the striated edge, this is a, like a black tourmaline called shawl. Uh, there's a fair bit of it here as well. Uh, beautifully striated edges. So I've got a, a close-up picture of that as well. So this is a real cool thing about the barrel pit. You find so many little minerals, different varieties, some of them quite a mystery. And I found something that at first glance would appear to be quartz, but then it's got some really distinctive cleavages. It's absolutely clear. Um, I'm really not sure what it is. I'll have to take it home and think about it. This is it right here. I'll try and do a close-up. Maybe you've got some ideas. Um, uh. So behind me, the Pattersons, serious rock hounds and owners of the property. Um, what I have here is Clevelandite. It's a sort of chalkyish white rock. Um, this sort of greenish coppery greenish smears barrel partway through its erosion process it's nothing like the aquamarine you would see in a gem quality setting um, and apparently the barrel occurs for the most part on the very edges of the white clevelandite um, mrs patterson gave me um, this tiny thing here this is the alanite it's a dull color and there's a tiny little crystal there so um it's usually kind of platy as well. I'll do a close up of this so you can see. You can see it. Here's a piece of the shawl, the black tourmaline. 
and I'm looking down from from above on top of the prism it's got a triangular shape that's pretty typical to the uh, to the uh, shawl or to the any kind of tourmaline and then I've got a really tiny tiny little piece of the junk mineral zunite or yuxonite however you want to say it highly highly lustrous shiny um, it almost has the luster of say uh, galena but it's black um, the tourmaline is a lot duller um, with the striated edges that's how you know the difference barrel quite a bit of barrel laid out here whoever's you know there it is again the sort of rough sort of barrelly that sort of greenish brown color in its better qualities gem qualities it's um, aquamarine uh, you could get heliodor which is the yellow barrel very beautiful I have a lovely faceted yellow uh, heliodor at home fair bit of aquamarine so as Dave says he's actually blasted down to a depth of 10 feet behind me here um, he just hasn't dug it out because families come you know with kids and so on but you can pretty well go down 10 feet in that rubble behind me um, so he says you know down a foot or two you're then into virgin rock basically so I'm gonna do a little digging I don't know what it's gonna yield there's a lot of lovely tourmaline I'm finding you know just like shards of it but it's kind of beautiful anyway so there is a process whereby the barrel dissolves out sometimes and redeposits nearby and I know Chris Fouts I've recorded his conversation in one of my books whereby he's explaining how this particular process occurs morning guys um, just as I'm making my uh, video here of the Quadville area I thought I'd elaborate on that process whereby the barrel is dissolved by fluorine and redeposited elsewhere so this in my uh, third volume of Rock Hound here I've got a description in the in the uh, chapter on barrel uh, as Chris Fouts says here well-known local geologist he says this dissolving process it changes a happy barrel to a crappy barrel this said referring to its transparency and color so page 61 Chris says that when he sees a hollow where the barrel once was he suspects that the crystals been dissolved and redeposited as phenakite and bertrandite this redeposition occurs some short distance away when found, those reformed crystals are greatly valued by collectors. The phenakite, which is BESIO4, looks pretty similar to colorless quartz in a trigonal prism, but the prism surfaces are striated along their length. The bertrandite, which is BE4SI207OH2, is an alteration of beryl that's typically colorless to yellow. It often appears as a pseudomorph, in other words, a false shape, filling the cavity from where the barrel crystal had been dissolved. Um, something else I found that was... Here's a, here's a really cool little thing. I, I've done a close-up for you. There's some, again, some super shiny yuxonite, or zunite, um, in with the red feldspar. As, they, uh, as I was told there by uh, the Pattersons, uh, the, the, the zunite occurs in the very red, red feldspar, all of the radioactives. Um, it takes a regular colored feldspar and burnishes it, turns it darker, much darker in color. Here's an example. Just found the most beautiful spine of tourmaline. It's quite small and thin. It's terminated on the end. Absolutely lustrous. Very cool. There is speculation that um, it's pegmatite with the blast. As you can see, the blast and this trench the trench itself some some have suspected that it is deviating away from the actual pegmatite so um, that's just a matter of opinion of course but I just found another uh, another little piece of columbite here if you've read my books or attended any of my talks at the Jamboree um, you would understand why I am so excited to find the columbite uh, or anything to do with the coltan ore overall uh, coltan ore, um, it is the source of tantalum, in this case a much higher niobium concentration um, and it's basically what they use in the tantalum capacitor which is really the driving economic thing with our modern information age technology 
uh, niobium, but usually or often it is also tantalum, which comes from the Congo. It's what they call a blood mineral. Digging downwards where I'm standing, by the way, thanks for the knee pads, whoever left them here. I'm making good use of them. Um, you can reclaim them if you see me at the Jamboree. What I found here is a little piece of zoonite or yuxonite again, don't know which to call it, uh, with an external crystal form. Have a look at it. Very rare find to find the external crystal for this. Fantastic, and you can see the, the shininess of it from behind. Great find today. So you want to know your minerals when you arrive here. And you've got a little board that tells you. Zoonite, really highly lustrous, black. Get your columbite, it's plate here. Um, not quite as lustrous. You can find a lot of tourmaline. So when I turned up, um, the parkers were here fixing up their little uh, board here with the, the mineral displays. I mean, they advertise beryl as, as the main thing. It's kind of a, a coppery color, greenish coppery color for the most part. Not usually what you would expect in terms of a gem quality. Jeff's just found something interesting. Uh, but I guess some rock hounds had gone kind of a little bit over the top and they ended up rock hounding these particular minerals over the winter. So, I mean, that's not really that's not good form at all. I mean, you're damaging the property of the people, of the people who actually own this. So, I mean, anyway, nevertheless, they've replaced it, they fixed it up. Um, as it says here, it was discovered, the dike itself was discovered in 1897 by John Sullivan. About three tons of barrel were reported to have been obtained from this location, most of which were said to have been shipped in 1927 for research and industrial use. And what I did understand is it was used to harden tank armor and the Germans sent it back to us in the form of hardened tanks during, I think it was World War I or two. I can't recall which one. Nevertheless, great place to come. What are you finding, Jeff?